Today on channel Alexis Sticky Six, we will be visiting NASA's JPL. Over 20,000 people every year come to JPL's open house. My first part. This is supposed to go get a boulder on an asteroid, touch the boulder, and then grab, grab it. And so these arms would pull in. They actually built um, another, like a crawling and grab. Uh, there's uh, these that pieces right here that would like get a boat climbing over, touch the boulder right on the asteroid. asteroid. Like a non wheel and Grab it and pull that so we can take it off. Oh, you and your dad can share this? Okay. And take a look. This is a picture of Mars from Spirit. And one of the highest resolution pictures we have. White marks on the planet. Yeah, right. Okay, this is a model, a full scale model of the InSight lander. It's our next Mars lander. So and what it does is it puts instruments on the surface of Mars that will study seismology, which is earthquakes, but only on Mars. And based on that, they'll be able to tell the, well, how the inside of Mars is constructed. And that will allow scientists to then understand how solar systems form. This is the size of the Earth compared to Jupiter. How far away do you think you should put it if it was a real good scale model? Three miles. If this were really Jupiter and we made a proper scale model of the Earth, we'd have to put it three miles away. This is NASA's spacecraft assembly lab. This is a filter room to clean any tiny particles so it doesn't affect the assembly of the spacecraft. Okay, it's coming a little closer down here. Uh, Again, next year you can see the vehicles. This is our high bay number two. We have another high bay number one on the other side. This is a clean room which we build our spacecraft. We built the Cassini spacecraft currently orbiting Saturn in here. We built the Galileo spacecraft in here which went to Jupiter. We are building in here. When you see in front of you the LDSV test vehicle number three. We just saw a bunch of stuff on the line coming in about LDSV. This is our third test vehicle. We already flew number one and two in 2014 and 2015. This vehicle will be used to test our parachute and supersonic inflatable aerodynamic accelerator. That big inner tube that you saw inflated outside. We have another one of those inner tubes packed up against the side of the vehicle underneath that white cover. We're going inside the spacecraft fabrication lab. This is a place where they build spaceships. This one is the lightest. Aluminum is the lightest. And then it's titanium. Then it's invar. And then 
So, one hour. What are these pieces used for? But these are usually used like these are structural parts. So if you're building something and then there's another part mounted out here, maybe not this one, but let's just say the two parts come together like this. You, the way we build something is we use lots of small parts and put them all together as an assembly. Sometimes they'll hold on the solar panels, sometimes they'll hold on the batteries. It all depends on where the part goes. And how do you connect them together? Usually with fasteners, like screws and inserts and bolts, you know, like you see on cars. That's what these are, these threaded holes. Those are for screws right there. This is used for the outside of the spacecraft. It is used to protect astronauts. What's it made of? Uh, that's made of nickel, and it's nickel on top of polymer. So it's nickel over plastic. Very rough. And then this one is kind of less rough. Yep, it's because this one has metal on it, and uh, this one doesn't. Yes, ma'am. What is that? That is our welding clamping fixture. This is our welding head. This is how the actual head works. See a little electrode? Yeah. yeah that revolves around the actual tube. So as the tube is right inside here, it revolves right around the actual tube. Oh. If I reach in here, I can grab another tube. See, this is another tube. We want them to fit very close to each other. We take the welding head itself, it fits right around the actual tube. Second, weld, as it revolves around. And there we are, welded around the actual, weld the tube together. It's up to about 3,000 degrees in that 60,000 wide beam. 20 seconds to cool to the touch. There we are, go a little touch. Connect you want to touch it? No, I'm the whim. <laughs> Daddy, no, not at all. you're such a yeah. chill now. No, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. One of the properties of stainless steel heats up and cools down rapidly. Yeah. yeah. They're plastic and they're aluminized. So vacuum deposit aluminum either on the one side or both sides. And what are they used for? They're used for thermal control. So we want to keep the spacecraft warm. And we also want to keep it from overheating in the sun, from getting too hot in the sun. It's so warm. So warm and cool though. How do you make this? We pull each one of these individual layers one by one over each other. And then we create a pattern in the shape of what we want to cover. And then we'll cut that out and we'll bind and sew the edges. And then we have different implementations, lacing cord, we can tie in the spacecraft, they'll have pod dogs. So we cut and sew. We tailor soft goods for spacecraft, just like clothing. Excuse me, what is the robot's name? Um, this robot is Spider. And how about that robot? Hey guys. Uh, this is a mate. So this robot is used in the Arctic, basically, you know, the extreme environment. It's dry and it's cold to, you know, simulate what it might be like to drill and work on Mars. Why are they landing so many ships on Mars? Mars is important to study because it's very similar to Earth and it's close to Earth, so we can get there. And we're, look, things we want to learn about Mars are, you know, what it's made of at the surface, what kind of stuff is happening below the surface, what kind of geological activity to sort of learn about how the planet was formed, its past history, and then we can learn was there life on Mars in the past, is there any life on Mars now, and, you know, how does life outside of Earth exist and what's it composed of. You never know. Maybe in your lifetime. Happen. Behind me is a full-scale model of the Mars Curiosity. So that means if every one of them has a planet, do the math, 
it's at least no less than a couple hundred billion planets. And if you believe like I do, that it's not just one planet per star, but multiple planets per star, like here in our own solar system, there may very well be over a trillion planets in our galaxy alone.